begin this good time in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Gathered together, we are mindful that we are in need of God's mercy, and so we call upon His forgiving love. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve this with constancy, the author of all that is good. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At what time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people? It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress, since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape. Everyone who was found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall have an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. 
the word of the Lord. Our response shall be, you are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Let's pray. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Of that day, one hour, no one knows, 
neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good. We point the finger 
with someone else. The blame is placed on another person. And yet we ourselves are sitting back. We have not done anything to help make this world a better place. God asks us, Jesus tells us that this world is ours. And we are here to make it a better place for all to live, for all to have a meaning and a purpose. And if they don't have purpose and direction in that life, we are called. We are called to put that purpose in front of us, to make that call a freedom to become that person. It's not always easy, and you don't always succeed. But search as well. Have you ever succeeded in everything that you put your hands on? I wanted to do it. I doubt it. If I look at my life and I go back into the times on which I was and to where I am now, I see a many things that could have been better because of me. And I see that the destructiveness that I might have caused still puzzles me. Because there was good that I made bad. And I can't say how much bad that I made good. But at the same time, I knew that there was a God. I just didn't have that much in my heart to do right. And so I failed. And from that time that I realized that God was an important part of my life, I tried to make the comments. I've not always succeeded. The bitterness sometimes comes back. But yet I know that between the first coming of God and the second coming of Jesus, the first coming of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, there is something that I've got to answer for. And that is what good I did versus what bad I caused. I'm trying as best as I can, as much as I can, to make things purposeful in my life. All Christians should be doing the same thing. We are called to be brothers and sisters with one another, to act as though we are in love with them and show them that love. God chose us, mere, weak, inferior people, to be His own. And then He asked us to gather others to make them happy. We got a family. We want the best thing in life for that child, whether it be girl or boy. You got uncles and aunts that have been good to you, and yet sometimes they do it for you as well. But in the meantime, what I want you to think about, my brothers and sisters, is how much purpose in life have you dedicated to God? Are you still holding on? Grievances that you've held against a family or a person for 10 years. Do you refuse to forgive them? If you have, remember one thing you've got to tell this. There is an end to your life that's going to be coming, and you don't know when it's going to happen. So why not make it good while you've got the fight? While there's a red blood cells and white blood cells running through your body. Because once you become cold, you can't do anything that will judge. And the one that's going to do the judgment has already told me, I've come once and I've paid my life so that you can be reduced to sin. I'm going to come a second time to see what you've done with that chance between the first coming and the second coming. And if you live right, 
you've got a life of trouble. But if you've done wrong and sins again, you will be rejected. And there will be a burning. We all know what that means. Trust me. God is good to you. We should be good to others. We should be grateful to God and give Him the thanks and praise. As our time nears, and I realized this after I got to be 50, where did all of the time go to? I was once a teenager and now I'm on the downside of it. I've got more days behind me than I do. What have I done with those days? And when that final day comes, will I be ready to say to God, I've done my best? Or will I have something in my mind and heart that say, I didn't do the right thing? It's too late now. My brothers and sisters, this is serious business. Life is a game. God put the players in action. And you and I are the players. What we do between the time of Jesus' first coming and Jesus' second coming seems like doom. But you promise yourself, I promise to you that it will happen. Will we be ready? Make peace of us be ready. Amen. Let us now bless our hope and trust in God as together we pray to God for you. I believe in my God, Father Almighty, Maker of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the one Father before all things, God of God, I am God, through God, to God, the God of not made, not substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us to stand for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, he was the part of the Virgin Mary and became man. By the Spirit, he was crucified and the Lord's side. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Spirit. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Son of Church. I confess one Catholic from the end of sin, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing the promise of hope, our God offered to all those who face trials and tribulations. Let us bring our burdens to the Lord and our divine assistance. For the church, that like Jesus himself, this mystical body of Christ might offer true hope from darkness to all those who suffer by intervening to end persecutions and to offer compassionate care wherever possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the world that inspired by the promise that the wise shall shine brightly, people everywhere will prioritize wisdom and justice in order to bring about peaceful solutions to all our current conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our nation, that we might have the insight to recognize those who are most in need so that we can provide the concrete assistance that will move them from the darkness of despair into the light of hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those gathered here today, that we might always remember God's promise to rescue us from distress, so that we can persevere in hope 
no matter the challenges we must face. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For those who have died, especially Marvel Ray Henry, Sister Celestine, Edward Jones, Sister Mary O'Donnell, Dr. John, Geraldine Dorso, Marie Simon, Sister Claudia, Benny Baker, and Stephen Smith. May they await to live forever, shining with the splendor of the firmament in their new life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please add your own intentions. Lord, and gracious God, we offer you our prayers and needs this day. We come to you with great hope and we come in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of the for our children and the Lord. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that while we offer in the sight of your majesty, we obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your, with your divinity. And even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we are praying.
the mystery of faith. We As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look and pray upon the elevation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Teresa, the little flower, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Charles the Longa, St. Benedict the Black, St. Joseph the Kita, St. Monica, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleased to with their passing in this life, be kind and next to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is true. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And let us offer one another a sign of this peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed was called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the my roots. Lord, say the word, and my soul shall be
have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. You might say, for God wants to remind members of the church of our Eucharistic adoration, a time of private prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. Which is held on Wednesday, beginning with the four o'clock mass and then continuing until 7 p.m. Usually people make their uh, holy hour of prayer, so it's about an hour. Uh, so if you're interested, please come and join us. There's a sign up sheet in the back if you'd like to sign up and get yourself to a particular hour. Please come join us. Also, we will be hosting a Christmas tree gifts program again this year. The recipients will get children from Madison James Foster Elementary School. The ornaments will list the child by age and needs, and the gifts will be bagged, but not wrapped, to return by December 12th. Um, you can see we have the Christmas tree up here, but the ornaments are on the back table with the sign up sheet. Uh, the red ornaments are for the girls, and the green ornaments are for the boys. So please, if you want to pick an ornament and get those gifts returned by December 12th, to make someone's Christmas a little bit better. Parish Council decided to start the hospitality ministry again on January 2nd. Uh, we need to know how many people would be willing to assist and provide the brunch. Uh, sign up sheets on the back of the church. How frequently we'll have it will depend upon how many households sign up and are available. Uh, we have missed it, and by January, we hope the COVID situation will be even better to allow us to socialize. So, if you'd like to start the hospitality again on January 2nd, please sign up and be interested in helping out. Any other announcements for today? We always like to welcome guests and, and acknowledge them. So, if you're a guest with us today, you just give us your name and where you're from so we can officially welcome them. So, is there any guests to be acknowledged today? Yes. Thank you. 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This message ended. Let us go in peace, serving God by the everyday examples of our lives. Thank you. Thank you.